early years of our movement, how our movement was very much dedicated to propagating the holy name. We would have Sankirtan every day. Our program was like that. We'd have a morning program, take some breakfast, and then go out on Harinam Sankirtan. And then come back for lunch. And then after lunch, there'd be a little book class, reading Krishna book. And then go out again on Harinam Sankirtan. And then we would come back in the evening. And then have evening RT and class and some hot milk. And like that we were living. Our program was just the holy name. Every day chanting and distributing the holy name. When I first came in touch with the Krishna Consciousness Movement, they were, they had, we had some books, we had some, not really books, we had magazines, we had the Back to Godhead magazine, which was printed at that time, it was printed in Japan. And at that time, the Back to Godhead magazine was prepared in such a manner that it would be good reading for new people to give them information about the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Today, if you look at the Back to Godhead magazine, it's very different. Today, it's, it's an in-house magazine. It's a magazine just for the members, really, of the Krishna Consciousness Movement. And the articles are a bit deeper and more sophisticated, more philosophical. But in the beginning, the articles, in, in those times and times of Srila Prabhupada, the articles were much more basic philosophy and talking about thank you Tom, and chanting and dancing. And of course it was it was all black and white. It was black and white with a cover. But co the color the cover was in color, but the inside of the magazine was all black and white. And it was printed in Japan. So it been printed the magazine was printed in big quantities and then they were shipped around the world. So in England, where I had joined the Krishna Consciousness Movement, we had a stock, we had some Back to Godhead magazines. And we also had the Krishna book, Volume 1. And it was big, a big size, silver cover, beautiful book. Those were the, the only books we had at that time. Some people had Prabhupada's original Bhagavatam. The original Bhagavatam which had been printed in India. Srila Prabhupada had brought them with him when he went to America. He put them in boxes and brought them on Jaladuta. And when he got to America, he had them, he had them unloaded and he kept them with him. I don't know how he managed to move them around. He went to Pennsylvania, he went to Butler, and then he came to New York. I don't know how he managed to move the books because, you know, he didn't have any vehicle or anything. And he, somehow he did it. He brought the books with him on the boat and he distributed them. And some of the devotees in the UK, they had the set, three volumes, the first, the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam in three volumes, which had been printed in Delhi in letterpress. So letterpress, you know, quite laborious. Srila Prabhupada had to, he wrote the article, then he typed it, and then he take it to the printers and the printers would make the letter press 
and uh, arranged to print the book. So there were a lot of mistakes. And, you know, the book hadn't been edited much really also. Srila Prabhupada did everything himself. So there were, you know, it, 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 there were mistakes and the, and the grammar was not the best. But it was Bhagavatam and Prabhupada had personally designed the cover and painted the picture for the cover, which was, you know, that, that picture of the spiritual sky with Goloka and then the, the planet in the material world. And Prabhupada had done all that himself. So that we had that book, and then there was also one or two copies, not many copies, Nectar of Devotion. That book had been printed by the devotees. The devo at one point, Prabhupada wanted the devotees to do the printing, and they had bought, they purchased a printing press. And they were doing everything. It was done in Boston, in the temple in Boston. Not not the temple which they have at present in Boston, but the older temple, an older temple, rent, a rented house. Now they have a nice property in the center of Boston, which they purchased. But in, in Prabhupada's time, they had a rented house. And Prabhupada wanted the devotees to print the books. So some devotees said he knew how to run a printing press, and some devotees said he knew about photography, and somebody else said they could do the type of the typography. And Prabhupada would put them together to make the DBT. And of, oh, then the artists were also there. Some People said they could paint pictures and Prabhupada engaged them from the very beginning. He got people to paint pictures of the different pastimes. So like this, Prabhupada began the BBT there in Boston and they printed the nectar of devotion. The devotee Jai Ananda Das Brahmachari, now he's called Jayananda Das Thakur. Jayananda had donated to Prabhupada $5,000, which at that time was a lot of money. And Prabhupada used it to print the nectar of devotion. So the devotees printed it themselves. <laughs> It, it took them a long time, it was a lot of work. And when they did it, you know, Nectar of Devotion, it is, it's a medium-sized book. It's not, it's a big book, you can think. But I remember that the book which they'd done, it, it was nice, but the problem was the binding. The binding, you know, in those days that was also a difficult thing to do, to get the binding right, because it's a book about that thick, and the devotees will open the book and, you know, will close up. And often the book would come apart. So that was one of the problems. But the binding, very difficult to get good binding in those days. But anyway, they, we had a couple of copies of Nectar of Devotion, and we had a copy of Sri Ishopanishad. Srila Prabhupada had written the purports to the Sri Ishopanishad while he was still in India. He was publishing, he began publishing the Back to Godhead in 1944. So he was publishing it as, it was like a, a tabloid, it was one big sheet of paper with all black and white. And he would write all the articles and he'd get it printed. So that was how he began, first of all. He published Back to Godhead. And then someone said to him, they said, why don't you print books? You, they said, you're printing a magazine, it will be better you print books. 
because magazines, pieces of paper, like what you're printing, they can easily be lost. It will be better if you print books. And so Prabhupada thought about that, he thought, they're right, I should print a book. So then he started, he printed the Srimad Bhagavatam. He decided he wanted to work on Srimad Bhagavatam and prepare an English edition of the Srimad Bhagavatam with verse by verse commentaries. Very big task to take on. But Prabhupada was so enthusiastic. So he did. So Prabhupada was preparing for the future and he had the printing press at Boston. It printed the nectar of devotion. Not a big, maybe like a thousand copies or something, you know, not a lot of copies. So some devotees had come from America and they brought the book to England. That's how we had a copy there. Otherwise, we had so few books that the books had not been published yet. There were some recordings. We had those days, of course, there was no cassette, there was no CD, there was no, nothing like the technology which you have today. The recordings were on real to real tape recorders. And we had recordings of Prabhupada reading or talking about Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. And we were listening to these kind of lectures. Prabhupada had also made one recording. He'd made a record while he was in the USA. There was one man, uh, one man, what was his name? I forget his name anyway. This one man, he arranged to take Prabhupada to a recording studio. And Prabhupada brought devotees with him. And some devotee had the Esaraj, and some devotees had the Nidanga and Kartals and like that. And they made this happening album. They called it the happening album. And of course, they play it today. It's a wonderful recording. Prabhupada singing different prayers like Chintamani Prakara, you know, like this, you know, he's Prabhupada singing these different songs and Goswami as they come and like, so they made this recording, the happening album. So we had that, and actually that was what George Harrison had heard before he met the devotees, you know, the Beatles, because they were so big, so world famous, people would they, they would get all kinds of music from all over the world. So George Harrison had got a copy of Prabhupada's record, and he'd never met any devotees or anything. But he heard Prabhupada's recording, and Prabhupada in the beginning he gave the introduction to the Maha Mantra, right? where he's speaking about the, the holy name and the Maha Mantra and how this chanting is coming from the spiritual world. And George Harrison was listening and he loved it. He really liked it. He said, he said he played that record many, many times. And then when he met, when he finally met Shamsundar Prabhu, he said, where have you been? <laughs> because He'd been listening to the record for so long. And so he was always thinking, oh wow, this is amazing. What is and, and then the devotees came to England and then they met he met with George Harrison. So then George wanted to make more more records. They made of course the Radha Krishna album. But before they did that, they made the Hare Krishna Mantra. That was the first recording. And that went worldwide. It was very big. All over Europe it became very famous. And the devotees were like a, a pop group, you know. Just like, um, you know, these artists and bands and stuff like that. So the devotees were like that. The Radha Krishna temple. And they would come out in shaved heads, dhotis and saris. And, and people loved it. They loved it. There was a big place in London 
where they would used to have all of these concerts and you know all of these world famous groups like Pink Floyd and the Rolling Stones and all these kind of big names, they would play there. So Radha Krishna Temple, they were also on the bill. They would also be invited to come and go on and they would go on the stage. And they were but they were really good. They were musicians, you know, like Makunda Maharaj, Naladitma Makunda, he was a musician, professional musician. And several other people, like Yamuna also, she was a, a very talented singer, vocalist. And so they were really good, you know. They, and Prabhupada had trained them before they even went to England. Prabhupada had trained them, he'd, st he'd spent time with them, having kirtan together, training them for, you know, just to, to introduce the holy name. So, it was valuable that Prabhupada had done that because when they got to England, it didn't happen immediately, but after some time they got that opportunity to present the holy name. And they did it on a very big scale, you know, that Maha Mantra, the Hare Krishna Mantra record, it was played so much. All the radio stations played it, and it was on television. They used to have this program on television, it was called Top of the Pops. Top of the Pops. You know, they had a chart, a music chart, number one this week, number one, Top of the Pops, you know. And, and they were on that program, the devotees would be on that program. And, and they would show the devotees. And they, sometimes the devotees would give films about Krishna and Govinda and they would put it on. And it would be shown all over the UK, the whole country. In those days there was only like one, one or two television channels. So everyone would see it. So the devotees really, the, by, by their contact with George Harrison and by making that recording, it, it didn't just go over the UK, it went to Europe, all over Europe. And people were all, they all, they all wanted Hare Krishna, they all wanted the music, they loved the music, the chanting just mesmerized people. And even today, you know, even today, you go to England, the people, if they see a devotee, they'll say, Hare Krishna, you know, they'll, they'll sing the tune which was recorded by the devotee. And there was even, there was, there was one man, in, I was in Thailand a few years ago, in Thailand, I've been preaching in Thailand for many years now, but I remember in Thailand there was this one man, English man, he wrote a book about how he became a Buddhist, and he described how he became a Buddhist monk in Thailand, and then later on he went to England. But he said, when I went to England, everybody sang Hare Krishna to me. <laughs> they, they, they all thought he was a Hare Krishna. <laughs> because, you know, there he was with a shaved head and saffron robes. They thought he must be a Hare Krishna. And they were all saying, everywhere in go, people would say, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. <laughs> so, you know, people think that, oh, nobody knows Hare Krishna. I, w I was in China and people were saying, nobody knows Hare Krishna. I said, yeah, nobody knows Hare Krishna here. But you go to the UK, everybody knows Hare Krishna. And they think the Buddhist monks are Hare Krishna. So, you know, that, that, that is preaching. That is how we um, make nice propaganda to give the holy name. So here this week we're thinking about how to give the holy name to more people. We want to go out and go around, and contact people wherever we can, make programs to give the holy name to other people, chant. There, there's this one devotee, 
He's actually from the USA and he's a disciple of His Holiness Lokanath Swami. But wherever he goes, he, he just loves kirtan and he'll just do kirtan all the time. And every day he'll go out and kirtan and he's got, he's got a son who's a really good madanga player. Right? You know him? Yeah. And what's his name? Dance Avatar? Bhakta Avatar. Bhakta Avatar. And his son is who plays the Madanga really good. Vrindavan Dash, right. Vrindavan Dash, right. So Vrindavan Dash is his son and he plays Madanga and Bhakta Avatar, you know, he was <laughs> yeah, and he and he will go the whole day, and he just loves. And he told me he said he when he goes out and and, and thank your time, he came here to Malaysia. People were saying to him, "Where have you been? We've never seen you people for years. Where have you been? You know." So th this is actually unfortunate that we've allowed things to like that to become, uh, that we become, people don't know where to find us these days. It used to be, you know, people saw us every day on the streets. We would be out there on the streets. And everywhere in the USA, all the cities, you would see the kirtan parties. And then the, after the, 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 the 1970s, then the devotees started to distribute more books and they started going into the airports <laughs> because Prabhupada wanted us to distribute big books and it, Prabhupada said book distribution means big books and devotees learned that they could distribute a lot of books in the airports and they would, people would go, you know, just like nowadays you go to the airport with so many people so in the USA, there's so many cities and there were so many airports and the bodies would be there, especially in like Chicago, the O'Hare Airport. <laughs> they call it O'Hare Krishna Airport. And also Atlanta Airport, and Los Angeles Airport, the devotees would be there. And they would be there from morning to night. And in New York, the devotees would be, there was this one place in New York where we would go and distribute books. It's called Port Authority. Now, anyone who goes to New York, you go to the Port Authority, P-A, the, the Port Authority. It's the bus station, and then below the bus station is the underground subway. And the underground subway takes you to any part in New York, in Brooklyn, Manhattan, San Manuel. So it's a very busy place, you know, every day so many people go through there. And the devotees, we would be there every day giving out books. And many people became devotees there. Devamrita Swami met devotees there in the court authority. People like Deva Shakti Maharaji, who lives in Vrindavan nowadays, she, was, she used to be there. And she would be there the whole day distributing books. And I remember I was distributing books there one time. You know, I, I wasn't very good at it, but one day I got a big donation and I told David Shaggy, somebody gave me twenty dollars. She said, You should have asked her to give another one. <laughs> you know, I thought I'm doing great. I got twenty she said, No, you should have asked them to give another one. <laughs> Anyway, this is how our movement began. We were always out there distributing books because nobody was supporting our movement. The movement was supported by the devotees. The devotees were out there every day distributing books. And uh, in the beginning, actually, though, when I first joined the movement, they said, you can give the book out free. They said, people don't have money, it's okay, let them have it. But then Prabhupada, after some time, Prabhupada said, this is not very good. We're giving out so many books, who's going to pay for them? If we, can, if we give out for free all the time, who's going to pay for the books? 
because we had, we had no money, of course, the temple. All the devotees were full-time devotees and there was no congregation with jobs. If there was one person with a job, oh, it was very rare, you know. <laughs> but, but usually, practically everybody was just full-time devotee. And we would, we would encourage people, give up your job. <laughs> And, and they did that, they taught me, they taught, they, they convinced me also like that. Uh, I, I was staying, I was having a job and I was coming to the temple every day, every evening for RT. And then one devotee said to me, he said, you know, why don't you stay overnight? We have a morning program, you can come for the morning and then you can go to work, come home, come at night and prasad on here. I thought, well, oh, okay, yeah, you know. So, so I started, you know, staying at the temple and going to work and coming home and having arti and prasadam and everything. And then after a few week, a week or two doing that, they said, you know, give up that job. <laughs> so I said, okay. <laughs> you know, why worry, you know, jobs? You can always get so many jobs, you know. People get so attached to their jobs. They work endlessly, all day and night, every day, just keeping their job. But any time you can be kicked out of your job. One of our devotees was working in Dubai and they had a very good job, making a lot of money. But then the company decided to go, no, no, we're leaving Dubai, we're going to go to Pakistan. You're Hindu, you can't come in Pakistan, you're Indian, we don't want you in Pakistan. Anyway, find another job, yeah? Not so easy to find another job nowadays. Now, any time it can happen, you lose your job. Better to give your life to Krishna, work for Krishna. Wherever you go, you can always make a temple and preach Krishna consciousness. So Srila Prabhupada was encouraging devotees like that. And he would, Prabhupada would send devotees to different parts of the world to open up different areas. He sent Upendra Prabhu to Australia and he did very good. And then after they began in Australia, then he sent him to Fiji. And in this way Krishna consciousness was spread there in the southern hemisphere. And he sent uh, it was uh, Hari Vilas Prabhu was sent to France. We had some, there were some French speaking devotees there in the USA. Probably you go to France, make, and some of it then, Ansel Duda, he spoke German. Prabhupada sent him to Germany. And this way, different places opened up. And then at one point, Prabhupada wanted to begin the World Sankirtan Party. The world, the world Sankirtan party. Now you can imagine when Prabhupada said, I want to begin the world Sankirtan party. Everyone thought, I want to join. <laughs> Everyone wanted to go in the world Sankirtan party. Everyone wanted to join the party, go and travel with Prabhupada around the world and do Sankirtan. Right? Wouldn't you like to go? Yeah, wouldn't you? would all go, right? <laughs> so, you know, Prabhupada had a world Sankirtan party. Shamsundar and, and uh, his wife Malati and then Gurudas and Yamuna, they had been in London and Prabhupada said, you come, we're going to India, world Sankirtan party, leave everything. And Shamsundar just cultivated George Harrison, he said, oh, I have to go to India, <laughs> yeah, come on, we're going to India. Left everything, go off to India. And Tamal Krishna also went there at that time, he was a householder and he went there with his wife, they all went to India. They went with Prabhupada and Prabhupada then brought also the different temple presidents from the different places. So they had all been temple presidents in the USA and Prabhupada called them, I want you to come to India, you come to India, join the World Sankirtan Party. So they left everything, they left and put someone else in charge of the temple and then I'm, Prabhupada wants me to go to India, I'm going to India, joining Prabhupada's world Sankirtan party. 
And so they went off to India and they were with Prabhupada and they were traveling around India taking trains from one place to another. And they were all Westerners. And this was 1970, 1971. You know, India was uh, quite basic, simple living. The devotees were there, they come from America, they were not much used to the, the environment. It was quite a big change for them. And then, of course, the climate, the heat, and then the rain, and then the, the cold, <laughs> and, and different diseases as well, tropical diseases, jaundice, diarrhea, everything you could think of, you know, being in the India. You know, they're not used to the, the food, the oil, there's, you know, there's, you don't get the, the, the same kind of um, butter and milk and so on that you get in the West. So it was very difficult for the devotees. And they had difficulty to get along with each other. They were always arguing because they'd been used to being in charge. And now, you know, they're all together and they're all... <laughs> Each one was saying, I'm in charge. No, I'm in charge. <laughs> Prabhupada said, I was to be in charge. And even Jaipataka Swami tells how he was in charge, he was put in charge of Mayapur and Tamal Krishna Maharaj would come and take him out. Say, no, I don't want you to be in charge. <laughs> Some of the other. And Prabhupada would come back and say, Prabhupada would say, why are you not in charge? Prabhupada would put Jaipataka Swami back in charge again. And this happened like six or seven times, you know. Every time Tamal Krishna Maharaj, no, no, we don't want you in charge, you know. And he, he, he'd take Jaipataka Swami out and Prabhupada come back to him by kid. <laughs> Very interesting how these things happened in those days, you know. Anyway, the bodies were all young, very energetic and passionate and they didn't get along with each other always so well, difficult. But somehow Prabhupada had plans and people had faith in Prabhupada that Prabhupada's plans one day will materialize. There we were in India, 1970, there was no, there were, everything was rationed. To get cement it was all rationed. To get steel, it was rationed. To get rice, it was rationed. Oh, it, everything was quite a challenge to get the materials here. But somehow the devotees kept, kept going. I came to Delhi 1974 or 75. At that time, we had, we had one small house in Delhi. Prabhupada said there should be a temple in every village in Delhi. Gopal Krishna managed, managed to develop like that. They've got like 17 temples in Delhi. And they've got so many uh, bases. A base means a student center where people stay. And there are so many places, so many activities in Delhi now. But initially, 1974, we had one little rented house and we had Radha, Radha Partha Sarati. Prabhupada gave the names for the deities. This, this set of deities, Radha Partha Sarati, they were used in a pandal because Prabhupada would engage the devotees to do things like put on a pandal. A pandal is like just like we had the, the program in Johor last weekend. So we had, in, in India they would put our pandals, but they do it all outside. And they would do it in the city. They'd find some big field and they put up a stage and cover it and invite, you know, have a big program. Uh, one time in Mumbai, 
when he did one, the first Pandal, Shamsundar Prabhu, he's a very, you know, he's got a brilliant intelligence. So he got the inspiration. He got this huge big balloon and he got Hare Krishna written on the balloon. And they had it put up right up in the middle of Bombay, right over the top of the place where the program was taking place. So people all over Bombay, they could see this big balloon, Hare Krishna. Wow, you know, I mean, and the people, everybody, everybody wanted to come. You know, it's a big program. So, because they saw this Hare Krishna and, and they saw that they knew the devotees are there and said so they off. So many people came, lots of people would come. And so they did that in Mumbai, then they went to Delhi, they did the same in Delhi. They had programs also in Jaipur, they went around different places, put on programs. It's the program, in India they do like that, they have the sadhus. And so different sadhus will come and they'll have a big pandal and thousands of people. So Prabhupada had our Western devotees do it. And they would do it very nicely some of them, you know. So the Shraddha Partha Sarati, the deities, they were brought there specially for that Pandal program. So after the Pandal was over, what to do with the deities? And Prabhupada put them in the Delhi temple. They will stay there in the Delhi temple. And so they were there, we just had a, a little rented house and there were only a few devotees, but we were worshipping. Just like in London, when I joined the London temple, uh, there was only one Brahmana, a Mataji, and she was, she was, that was Mundakini Mataji, she's French. She's still a devotee, she's still around. So Mundakini was worshipping the deity, she did all the artis, she dressed the deity, she made the offering every day. She was a very amazing devotee. And what happened was uh, Prabhupada came and then Prabhupada initiated people, so there were more Brahmanas and everything. And then he told Mundakini, he said, I want you to go to Russia and marry this one Russian boy. Because Prabhupada had gone to Russia. And he met this one young man who was a nice devotee. So, uh, Prabhupada, uh, we're expecting Jaipadaka Swami to come, right? So, I'm just looking at this thing. Is he coming? Is he enough? Two minutes. Two minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I was the Mundakini anyway, Prabhupada said to her, I want you to go to Russia, you marry this boy and train him up in Krishna consciousness. And she did it. And even now she's traveling in Russia, preaching there. So people had that kind of faith in Srila Prabhupada. That Srila Prabhupada could empower devotees to do wonderful things. So the holy name is very important for all of us. We want to also think how to distribute the holy name. So many things can be done. But Sankirtan is very powerful, very important for us to have nice Sankirtan parties. Nice, devote, nice groups of people going out, giving the holy name. And if you have some simple sweet, you can give out some prasada, you can give out invitations to come to the temple. We can invite people to get to know the devotee. Prabhupada taught us devotees of Krishna are everywhere. They're just waiting for us to come. Jai Jagannath Pavadeva Sabhadra, Nittai Sundar Gorahari, Radha Sham Sundar Ki Jai. His Holiness Srila Jai Pataka Swami Maharaja Ki Jai.
Esto continúa por el otro país, mini santificado. Okay. Okay. So Rasa Prime Prabhu suggested that I also could speak something about the early days in Mayapur Dam. Uh, the land, of course, in Mayapur was purchased by Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada gave the money and he sent two devotees, he sent Tamal Krishna Goswami and another devotee, he sent them to Mayapur to buy the land and that they had to take cash, they had to carry the cash with them and Prabhupada showed them how to wrap the cash in their underwear, <laughs> wear it wear it on their body because very dangerous, you know, to carry money around in India. <laughs> uh, especially, you know, Westerners and go on the train and especially in those days because there was a lot of communism. There was a, a movement called Naxalite and they were communists and they were fighting to get some power and there was a lot of murders and people killed by these Naxalite people. So it was very dangerous. But Srila Prabhupada wanted them to, he sent them there to Mayapur with the money and they had to go there and meet this Muslim man and pay him the money and they bought that one piece of land and that piece of land where they're building the TOBP today. It's the main land. It's and you, the, the first building which they put up was, was the Prabhupada Kutir. At the entrance to the land is the Srila Prabhupada Kutir. So it's a little bamboo hut. And that was where the devotees were living initially. And Mayapur was a very quiet place in those days. There were none of all the 
all the temples which are there today, they were not there. Everything has come more in the recent times. So the devotees were living in this bamboo hut at the entrance to the land. And, and uh, there was a flood. <laughs> Just like Mayapur, it's like that. Sometimes there's a flood. And so when there was a flood, the devotees had to move up onto the roof because the water came all the way up. They couldn't get out. They just had to stay there and wait for the water to go down. And so they were up on the on living in the roof. And in this way, the devotees, they, they lived there and gradually they were able to get cement and steel and things. And Tamal Krishna Goswami told us how one time they had all the materials for the building and they took a picture of all the materials and they sent the picture to Prabhupada and Prabhupada chastised them. He said, what is this? I don't want to see the materials. He said, I want to see the building. <laughs> then taking a picture, you know, they were proud, they were standing on the bricks and the sand and they said, oh, this is all ours, we're going to put up the building. But Prabhupada said, do it, get the building, put up the building. And of course they did, they put up that wonderful building, the Lotus Building. Srila Jagvataka Swami Maharaj, he resides on the roof of that building. Right, he's in Mayapur. So the, the Lotus Building, it is very wonderful. Srila Prabhupada designed it with big verandas. And when we had the first Gaur Purnima festival, we were all staying there. In the first Gaur Purnima festival, there were about maybe 18 devotees or something. And you know, where to stay? There was only the one building. And so many of us, we just stayed on the veranda. But it was very enjoyable. And Prabhupada was concerned. He, he saw the feet, he saw devotees in Mayapur coming from the west. He saw that. Often they would just space out during the daytime. They didn't engage, didn't know how to engage themselves. They came to Mayapur and it's much hotter than anything they were used to. And they would, you know, be laying around and sleeping. So Prabhupada was not pleased. But then when he saw the devotees organize classes and have seminars, then he said, ah, yes, this is very good. He said, this is how you should all be engaged. You should have classes, come together and discuss the philosophy. And he said, if you don't like to hear the philosophy, then go and work in the fields. Go and take a plow and take the cows and plow the field. But don't just sleep. Don't just lay around. And so Srila Prabhupada was very concerned the devotees coming to the Holy Dham to be properly engaged. Hey, Thank you very much for the wonderful pastor. Now we have this one in the of the pastor. Can we say three more? Three more! Thank you. 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 So you want to go into all of the world, so you can now. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Aki Vedanta Swami Nidhinamini Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharini Pravisesha Sakavaji Paschakati Sakavini Shri 
and stole the library and wealth for both are are good for are are the wealth for ecology. So actually when I was in primary school, I used to go to the library and I used to look for books on ecology. And uh, they are both of us someone else and I play around, I play books. So we had books of someone playing lightning bolts. So the guy and all of those are all devas. So they all were different devas. Oh God. I learned it for so long. I was very interested in this. I was looking for some books and I was very interested in ancient stories. These are also them. So we all in our mind, in our so the um, the libraries of schools, other libraries. So you also can give us a sense of Shrimad Bhagavatam, the schools and public libraries. How do you know where is it? I don't know who reads it. You have to know who reads it. You never know who reads it. The robot said, in my previous life, I was born in India. She probably yeah. said, in my previous life, I was born in India. And now, uh, I started to answer my first one. So I started to answer that I'm very tall and so on. How about my voice today? So Tom, Tom, don't just. And Shri Prabhupada raised his voice to me and said, don't doubt this. Oh, uh, uh, this is a very tough subject to do by all the time. There's a great opportunity to give a ration and laugh at them. Please go on set, your wife or your husband or your wife or your room. So you can give away one set to your wife, your husband or to your monthly ration rooms. Someone. Or someone. And uh, and this is what I said, I'm not going to point you out. To do this, to respect over the honor. So, mention this way if you do this, do, do, do this in Bhakti Purnima to say that you go back to God. Yeah, people. Uh, of course, some people, you know, I'm going to learn a book, or I'm sad. So they join the other, they join the other side. So, some people, they don't have enough money to buy the entire set. So they join together, conjointly, they buy a set. They go to the Arhat Center or something. So they give it to the Arhat Centers and so on. So, why is the Bhagavata so crazy? So why is the Bhagavatam so pleasing to Krishna? All Bhagavatam uh, is getting ahead. It talks about the um, Lord Krishna. The whole Bhagavatam from beginning to end it talks about nothing but other than Krishna. There's his expansions, his expansions, his pure devotees, his pure devotees, and the endeavor incarnations, and his various incarnations. So we can go and our Shemade. In seventh Kendra, it has a Shemade. Uh, there's a Kendra, uh, there's an avatar. In different Kendra, it has different avatars. So, if you study the Bhagavad Gita, if 
de vele voor dat de bedrijf zal worden verstaan. Zelfs. Zowel de zelfs. Alle thuis. So if you study Srimad Bhagavatam, you drive in today, it's all about Krishna, the devotees and his different avatars. Our Sajjas, our brothers, I work together, our Sajjas shop. The Pachetas, our brothers, who work together to serve Krishna. Our Srila, the fear that talk. And gave them his prayer to honor the wish. So, Lord Shiva, he appeared to them to give his prayers, which he mentioned to the wishes. But, um, all of that was full of nectar. So, Shiva Bhagavata is full of nectar. Uh, and the saints. The divine, you know, the divine verse, and we are the Bhagavatam, is very terrifying. So when it states that even if you read any verse in Srimad Bhagavatam, even what verse, it's purified. So, the Bhagavad, he dedicated his life to translating and doing his books. Shri Prabhupada dedicated his life for translating and giving his books. First he did the Gita. First he did the Gita. And then the Srila Bhagavata. And then he did the Srimad Bhagavata. And then he did the trustees. Six hours life stretch. And then the book on that. The DVD trustees took many lectures and made a book on that. And Kukunti Deva's prayers. Like Kukunti Deva's prayers. But what Randy Prabhupada was, he was trying to finish the Srimad Bhagavatam. Maybe Srimad Prabhupada was trying to finish the Srimad Bhagavatam. He wrote the uh, Krishna book. He wrote the Krishna book. Which is a kind of a Synopsis of he was the Ravadam. So he wrote Krishna Kanyata. So he wrote the book Krishna book, which is a kind of synopsis for the next chapter. Um, um, Kanyata is called the modest and the Ravadam. The tenth chapter. Is the longest in the Bhagavatam. And the tenth canto describes the past times of Lord Krishna. In the tenth canto, it describes the past times of Lord Krishna. Vrindava, Vrindava, Madhura, and then Dwarka. And Dwarka. Um, you know, read the Srimad Bhagavatam and always had some new insights. So again and again, you can read the Srimad Bhagavatam and you can always gain new insights. On the spiritual platform, on the spiritual platform, Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, it keeps it at home. On the spiritual platform, it's chilling and hot with them, keep it up, keep it in your home. And they lost. Uh, will come and offer their obeisances. The devas will come and offer their obeisances. Every day. Every day. Thus, the Siddha Bhagavatam is the literary language of worship. Because the Shiva Bhagavatam is the literary incarnation of Krishna. Uh, tomorrow is a big day. So tomorrow is a big day. Say that. As far as the devotee is true, and giving to the Ravada. 
So the day that I spent especially dedicated glorifying and giving Krishna a half of the And Bhagavan, he sometimes sends us a good word, what do you want to do? The Sri Prabhupada sometimes send his secretary. Sometimes send his secretary one in the morning, two in the morning. To wake me up. To wake me up. And tell me. I don't want to say that. Uh, you I was uh, 24, 365, 24 hours every day. Anytime Bob wanted, he was all And I was 24, 365, any day, any time that Bob wanted, he would call me. So, I did not Bob had a special. A pseudo net. So she probably had a special mosquito net. Which was around him and his desk. So which was around his desk. In those days, he had a dictaphone. In those days, he had a dictaphone. And he would uh, give his uh, And he would give his quotation on the dictaphone. And he would give his quotation on the dictaphone. So he would translate the books. So he would translate the books. He had a book which had the whole script all the time in Sanskrit and the teacups of all the others. There were like seven acharyas. He had a group of Srimad Mahabharatam in Sanskrit with all the teachers. Of commentaries of the different Acharyas. Take on his commentaries, seven thinkers of different Acharyas. So that's no about his Siddhanta. His Guru Bhakti Siddhanta. Um, the Srinacha Kalipu. Yeah. Uh, all the great Shiva Goswami. Uh, so he would translate. And then write his purpose. And then he would translate and then write his purpose. As long as his purpose, he would do some sad kamari. So this then in his purpose, he would have what Jiva Goswami saying, what Krishna Chakra saying. So sometimes it's still some message from one. It is a charge. So sometimes he could give some message from the previous Acharya. Sometimes he gave his own his own commentary. Sometimes he gave his own commentary. On his experience of the world. Because he had the experience of the world. So he told me that he called me Exhibit Sarab. I mean, the book is all in Sanskrit. So, when you call me, I see to make sure that all is set up and all these books were in Sanskrit. Someone said, oh, how about I don't understand it? That's not true. Someone said, it's not. Someone said that Shri Prabhupada doesn't know Sanskrit. That's not true. You. He knows Sanskrit. He knows Sanskrit. And he was reading his answer, Jansari, yeah. So he was reading Sanskrit and giving commentaries, different commentaries. And uh, he would tell me what he would tell me. He continued his translation and I work. So he would tell me whatever he wanted to tell me, and then he would continue with his translation. Uh, he did such an austerity. At every night, every night till two o'clock or something, and every night he would translate. So he did such an austerity that from midnight to two o'clock or something, he was translated. His books are very rare. His books are very rare. And he gave such an effort to translate the books. He gave such an effort to translate the books. And Maya Brahma, Vaidala, whoever it was, 
Yeah, even in Bhagavad the white ants, termites, by your sitting, they eat your dog. So, even in Bhagavad there were white ants, termites, while you were sitting, they would eat your dog. Uh, that, that, he would be translating that. Shri Prabhupada, he was translating that. I think he started at 9th canto in Bhuvaneshwar. I think he started the 9th canto in Bhuvaneshwar. So, he went to this great austerity, how much we should reciprocate, and he can study and hear the truth. So he went through this great difficulty, austerity. So how much you should eat, study, and distribute this Shiva And the back of the eye magazine and the center pole had four pages from the Shiva Bhavada. In the back of the Rahid magazine, in the center page, there would be four pages of Shiva Bhavada. So Today, some members told me how they have uh, completed their Marxist house. Some of the members they told me how they have completed the Bhakti Shastri. Some of them are like I have with her Bhakti Vaiva. Some have completed for going ahead with the Bhakti Vaiva. Which is the first six chapters. The which is the first six enters of the Shiva Bhagavad That's how they are studying now with the Bhakti Vedanta degree. That means right now they are somewhat studying now with the Bhakti Vedanta degrees. They told me that it will take four years to study. They told me that it will take four years to study the Shiva Last six candles. The The last six came of the Shiva So, I got my Bhakti Vedanta degree. I got my Bhakti Vedanta degree. And I'm uh, making a system so that it will be done with the older voice. I'm making a system. So that they can get it quicker. So they are finding a system where you can get it quicker. I don't know what that system is. There's already a system for the Bhakti Vaiva. I don't know what the system is, but there is already a system for Bhakti Vaiva. Oh, I have the Vedanta Bhakti Vedanta degree. So I have, I got the Bhakti Vedanta degree. I am studying that. About the Sarvabhava. So now I'm studying the Bhakti Sarvabhava. Eva! And the ninth canto is a verse by Absa, which is criticized from her. So the ninth canto is a verse by Absa, where she criticizes the woman. But the Dharma, Prabhupada said, where it comes, in the but in the purpose the Prabhupada says when it comes to Krishna consciousness, whoever is Krishna conscious, whoever is Krishna conscious, the man, a woman, sutra, whatever. Whether they are man, woman, sutra, whatever, are all evil. They are all equal. So um, I never hear this first, this purport being quoted much. So this purport is being quoted much. We should see that we become Krishna conscious. We should see that we become Krishna conscious. For example, God of Indominasa, Arjuna Swami. Very thankful to His Holiness of the Indominasa, Arjuna Swami. All the things around Shri Prabhupada. His glorification of Shri Prabhupada. His reminding us of Prabhupada. His reminding us of Prabhupada. 
Combining all the different books together. So, like that, we were combining all the different books together. I got an odd ball there as well. I got an odd ball 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 as well. That's not as I got one day at least. So at least one day we should be dedicated to Sri Lanka. If you have the means, you should have a book or set of Sri Lanka. If you have the means, maybe you should have a book or set of Sri Lanka. And uh, I think they have translated a little bit of what they have in Tamil, they have in English. So I, think they, I think they have translated it from other different languages. And uh, today is the first day of the Harinam festival. So today is the first day of the Harinam festival. Of the one festival last week or so then? Yes. Um, I have told before how they do the Dharma. Chanting the holy name. I have told before how the Yuga Dharma is chanting the holy name. <coughs> All God was saying that during his sannyas ceremony, when the devotees started to chant, other members told them to be quiet. So the Prabhupada is saying how during his sannyas the devotees were chanting and other members told them to quiet down. He was keep going, keep going. Krishna Prabhupada was saying, keep going, keep going. He has great faith in the power of the Holy Name. So he had great faith in the power of the Holy Name. And he went in Malaysia and all over the world came to different parts. And then he came to Malaysia, he went all over the world, went to different parts. And uh, he found that people were changed just by chanting Hare Krishna. And he found that people were changed just by chanting Hare Krishna. And uh, even how other priests or other religions, as when they were with us, they did not saw cancer or they did not saw the holds up. What have you done? So, so even other priests, when they were comparing to us, they didn't look so urgent, they didn't look so, so transcendent, so they asked why they have done. So, he was mentioning how he found chanting and verified who were atheists, Galanas, Lakshas, and how, very inspired. So, how he found the chanting had changed the Yamanas, the Lichas, so he found the very inspired. So, this work is all by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. So, this was all by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. Nityananda. So, here in Malaysia, we are people have taken out the chanting. So, here in Malaysia, people have taken out the chanting. And uh, they have. It is spreading very nicely. They are spreading it very nicely. How is the lion? How is the how many of you have from Kashi Desh? Maharaj is going to Kashi Desh. Give me the chance. Hi, you know that, right? Yeah. 
Yes. 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 How is it going to wash it up? How is it happening to catch the dish? How many of you are going to go from center high side? They're the Chinese Japanese. But in China, we're doing a lot of preaching in the yoga studios, especially, and we're also trying to distribute mantra cards everywhere. We have many people go around, then they go out everywhere to give up mantra cards to people, so people get the holy name. Some of the distribution is also going on, although it's difficult because of the situation, but still. Some books have been distributed on the online, on the internet. A lot of uh, people get part of the Gita, so COVID. Am I saying that uh, distributing mantra cards, they are, that they are distributing uh, mantra cards and doing another preaching program? Yes, they made the So today they made the moon They made the moon cake. It is the moon cake. Today, from Georgia. Yeah. Today is the moon cake day. Today is the moon. Today is the moon cake. 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 The that's not my diet. That's not my diet. Maybe some devotees are like that. Maybe some devotees are like that. No, I take but instead of sugar, I take sugar. Stops it so like uh stevia. stevia. So, so instead of taking sugar, I take sugar substitute like mom for sweetener or stevia. How's that? Hello. Fruit? Mom fruit sweetener. Oh mom So anyway. So for Sean, the long in his longer people. Yeah. Or huh? Oh, anyway, we need to crush out of all the people. Uh, no. The laws of sorrows, we use all our senses in Krishna's service. So, in devotional service, we use all the senses in Krishna's service. So, we can also use the top. So, also, we can use the top. And we find many people. Attracted by the nice prasada. So we find many people attracted by the nice prasada. We use the tongue for chanting Hare Krishna. We use the tongue for chanting Hare Krishna. Uh, I'm very good. This actually is useful. It's possible in a case in a, in a, in a especially Chanting Hare Krishna. Actually, it makes it possible to get a taste of chanting Hare Krishna. The ecstasy. To get the ecstasy. So, when one who follows the regular rituals and chants, how they can get a spiritual bliss. So, one who follows the regular principles and chants, we can get the spiritual bliss. There's verses. Sudarsatva. This place is Sudarsatva. Pure goodness. Pure goodness. And uh, it's much greater than any other happiness. And it is much greater than any other happiness. But to tell it, I have to tell the real lifestyle and 
chant. So to get it, one has to leave the pure lifestyle and chant. So, by chanting Chaitanya Nityananda's hands, so by chanting Chaitanya Nityananda's name, sometimes even though one not be following very strictly, even though one may not be following very strictly, awaken the spirits of bliss. We get awakened to the spiritual bliss. Love of Krishna. Love of Krishna. So we want to encourage everyone to chant Sri Rasiva Bhagavatam. So we want to encourage everyone to chant and be Rasiva Bhagavatam. Distribute the books. Distribute the books. To get my first initiation, I have to read Sri Rasiva Bhagavatam. Ten times. To get my first initiation, I had to read the Bhagavad Gita ten times. And until I read it ten times, and then I read ten times, I could have got the first initiation. Then I can get the first initiation. Uh, so now I'm I got to India for so early. So tomorrow I'm going back to India, Krishna. And I stay in Malaysia and Johor Bahru and Palambur was very blissful. I stay in Malaysia and Johor Bahru and Palambur was very blissful. I thank everyone for giving me a spiritual association. So I thank everyone for giving me a spiritual association. Thank my Kibino. Bhakti Vidya Vidasa, Arshim Maharaj, his transcendental association. I thank His Holiness Bhakti Vidya Vidasa and Arshim Maharaj for his transcendental association. And that, oh, I look on her. Tomorrow I have my medication and eating I need. Tomorrow I have the medication and then in the evening I leave. Oh. I can't see the details. I can't see the details. I have cataracts in my eyes. Because I have cataracts in my eyes. But I can hear all right. But I can hear all right. I can see the, the, the people. But I can see the people. Unless I know them. Unless I know them. Uh, in this state. In this state. I can't tell who is who. I can't tell who is who. I thank you all for your Christian lives. I hope that you all read about books. So I thank you all for following Christian consciousness. I hope that you all reach your Dharma's books. And, uh, Distribute them as much as you can. And distribute them as much as you can. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Come. Um. Yeah. 